So I wanted to do this video in this article that the New York Times ran. You can check it out. It's basically a puff piece they're doing on these black Hebrew Israelites. Now, this is the group that's yelling at the white students with the MAGA hats, calling them all sorts of r racial slurs, gay slurs, saying they look like school shooters. Just basically, they're like the black KKK or something. They're just disgusting people or the black uh, Westboro Baptist Church or something. Terrible, disgusting racist. Now, the New York Times does this piece that talks about how this moment of them yelling at the kids could be a great moment of divine intervention for them and it could help them out the piece is basically a puff piece i encourage you to read it all i'm not going to get to it all here just certain sections i want to talk about but basically it's saying oh some say they're hateful they had a profane exchange with the kids blah 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 uh and then it finally goes on to talk about the southern poverty law center and what they say about them now the southern poverty law center is a joke of an organization that is used by government and by all of these groups as like the go-to basically like the snopes of which groups are aggressive, which groups are terrorist groups or hate groups, and which aren't. The Southern Poverty Law Center admits that they focus primarily on right-wing groups, and they're mostly giving left-wing groups a pass all the time. They've done things like unfairly malign people like, uh, uh, you know, Islamic reformists that argue against Islamophobic people all the time. They've maligned them as super right-wing and hate groups and things like that, and they've had to settle out of court with them. So I want to get to reading this part that talks there and uh, see what goes. So let's start here. The Southern Poverty Law Center, which tracks extremist groups, categorized at least 80 nationwide groups that follow the Hebrew-Israelite theology as hate groups. They constitute about one-third of all the black nationalist groups. The number of black nationalist groups has been increasing, said Heidi Bierark, who oversees the center's tracking of hate groups. Let's get on to it. Remember that Heidi woman's name. She's the person in charge at the Southern Poverty Law Center of tracking hate groups. It says... They argue the best response of evils is to separate and form their own institution, uh, evils of governments separate and form their own institution. In other words, these black Hebrew Israelites say we need to form our own government, not the U.S. government. That's not necessarily a radical idea, says the New York Times, for many black people. Miss Birick said the groups like the Hebrew Israelites were also anti-gay, anti-white, and anti-Semitic. Here's a quote from Miss Birick. These are really fringe movements. And they're also very different than white nationalist groups that have access to power. This kind of thinking arose in reaction to the white supremacy and the abuse and exploitation of white people. Well, isn't that special? The Southern Poverty Law Center says, yes, this anti-gay, anti-white, anti-Semitic group, well, we shouldn't, they're not that bad. They're not like white nationalist groups that have access to power. It's just a natural reaction to white nationalists. Are you kidding me? What power do white nationalist groups have access to? Is the KKK doing anything seriously? No, they're almost universally loathed to the point where if David Duke says something, everyone whose name he mentions has to re renounce him 500 times. Compare that to someone like Louis Farrakhan, who's a black racist, a black anti-Semite, who's got pictures with all sorts of members of the Congressional Black Caucus, with Obama himself. We have any access to neo-Nazis or KKK having access to the high levers of government like that? All of these cultural institutions of power, such as academia, Hollywood and the entertainment industry, athletics, the mainstream media, the people that control Silicon Valley. How much access to power do white nationalist groups have to any of that? To government? None. People freak out once in a while if someone says something they perceive as a racist white statement and that's it. There's no power from these groups whatsoever. This is just the Southern Poverty Law Center lying and trying to differentiate. Yeah, okay, these black Hebrew Israelites are bad, but they're not that bad. They're not like white groups. And that's what this whole New York Times piece is trying to say, that somehow this group's not that bad, which is exactly why I did these other videos. Watch that video and watch them screaming at these kids. The, ant the homophobic slurs, the racial slurs, making fun of them saying they look like school shooters and things like that. Obscenities being shouted. Eh, it's not that bad. It's not like they're white nationalists. The only difference is cultural Marxism, that they think white. It's the actual inverse of the truth. The groups that have the most access to power are actually these groups that, like the black Hebrew Israelites, that could literally operate freely almost every day, as even this article admits, in these major cities, and no one bats an eye. People just ignore them. That's power. Could the neo-Nazis do that? Could the KKK? No. Now, am I defending neo-Nazis to the KKK? Of course not. I'm glad they don't have power. But this article in the Southern Poverty Law Center justifying this is ridiculous. Miss Birx goes on. Even though their style might be intimidating... The black Hebrew Israelites don't have a history of violence. I want you to remember that. That's the head of the Southern Poverty Law Center saying they don't have a history of violence. We'll skip this next part. Let's go to the very bottom. 
To many black people, Hebrew Israelites are a harmless part of their community, said Todd Boyd, a professor of race and pop culture at the University of the Southern California in Los Angeles, one of the many cities where the group can be seen working the streets. Many, 80 sex of these. More alarming to many Africans Americans, he said, is seeing a white guy in a Make America Great Again hat. Do you see the insanity of this? This group that's actually yelling that they're going to commit violence. Whites will be their slaves. They'll kill whites. They'll kill other races. They'll kill homosexuals. They'll kill transgenders. Shouting all these slurs about that. They're not that alarming. It's just part of everyday life. They're in all these communities. Now a white guy in a Make America Great hat. That's what the real danger is. Now, keep in mind Miss Beard here. Read this line again. Even though their style might be intimidating... The head of the, one of the heads of the Southern Poverty Law Center says that the Hebrew Israelites do not have a history of violence. Okay, sounds reasonable. Let's check it out. Um, black, here's an article from The Voice from 2011, Village Voice. And I'm starting right here if you can see my cursor. Black Hebrew Israelites began showing up in the East Coast ghettos in the 70s. Members of the Miami-based Nation of Yahweh were indicted in 1990 on RICO charges that included extortion, arson, and 14 counts of murder. Founder Yahweh Ben Yahweh went to federal prison for conspiring to kill random white people, including one beheading, as an initiation right into his sect. He was said to have told new members to kill me a white devil and bring me an ear. Yeah, that doesn't sound like a history of violence. 14 counts of murders, beheadings, just what they were charged with. That doesn't sound violent. Well, maybe you're saying, well, that was way back in 1990. Nonetheless, what are you talking about? The group doesn't have a history of violence. The KKK killed people in the 90s. We still talk about that. We still talk about murders they committed in the 60s, as we should. They're a disgusting group. But somehow we could say these 14 murders and beheadings? Nah, no big deal. That's not a history of violence. Let's get a little more recent, shall we? ABC News from 2011. Seven charged an alleged cult martyr of a woman and child in North Carolina. You might not be able to see this whole thing. Let's get to it. The leader of an alleged cult pillared in court Tuesday to answer charges in the deaths of a woman and a child found buried in a backyard of a house in Durham, North Carolina. Six other people who police say are members of the alleged cult were also charged with murder. Peter Lucas Moses, Jr., 27, is believed to be a leader of a cult called the Black Hebrew Israelites. He was charged with the murders of Antoine McCoy and five-year-old Jaden Higginbotham. No history of violence, though. Charged and convicted of murder of a baby and another woman. Seven people charged in this murder. No history of violence. How disingenuous can the New York Times and the Southern Poverty Law Center be? Absolutely disgusting. Heck, let's go to see what the SPLC itself said about this group in 2008. Racist black Hebrew Israelites becoming more militant, says the Southern Poverty Law Center in 2008. The black supremacist wing of the Hebrew Israelite movement is spreading its leaders and are growing increasingly militant. Huh, that was 2008, but now we're being told they don't have a history of violence. I mean, the murder, sure, I guess that's bad. Uh, you know, killing babies, beheading white people, and they're preaching that they're going to kill more white people. But that's not a history of violence, even when they're growing more militant in 2008. I wonder what happened that changed it. Oh, that's right. The Southern Poverty Law Center is engaged in the same narrative that the New York Times and the rest of the media is. White kids in MAGA hat, evil. So these black Israelites, not that bad. We have to forgive them. That's what we're dealing with here. The New York Times, after maligning these kids and smearing them, is now literally taking the worst group there, the black Hebrew Israelites that yelled all these racial slurs and basically doing a puff piece on them that ends with a quote that's saying, actually seeing a white guy in a Make America Great Again hat's worse. If this doesn't show the agenda and how two-faced and disgusting they are, I don't know what is, so... Alright, if you like this video, like and subscribe, and uh, I'll probably be doing a live stream around noon tomorrow. Have a good one.